This is the season of eyes opening. Physically and spiritually. And I'm talking about yourself. I'm talking about people you love, people you don't know. Eyes are opening. And here's what it means. The fake and compromised will be exposed as dull and useless. The authentic and pure will be on display as millions upon millions flock to the light of the Lord shining through his bride. And we are his bride, so we must prepare. We must prepare because the eyes are opening. Habakkuk 2.14 says, The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah 60, verse 1, you know this, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In Revelation 1 and verse 7, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him, even so. Amen. So we must prepare. You may think you are ready, but if you hear the sound of my voice, you must prepare. Romans 13, 11 and 12, and do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So 20 years ago, this dates me just a little bit. 20 years ago, I was in college. And, you know, I lived a pretty good life, I would like to say. Grew up in a Christian home, I was in the choir, started playing the piano around that time. I was in an art history class. Really exciting, right? It's not that exciting. It was an elective. I had to take an art elective. And one of the uh, activities we did was, here's a painting. Tell me what you think. And so it was a painting of, it was like you're in a forest, and the painting was of a tree in the middle of the forest, and there was a light shining only right in this clearing in front of the tree. Now, I thought the painting was ugly. I thought, like, uh, okay, like the tree bark is kind of gnarly, and, you know, there's, uh, I just didn't like it very much. But then the next thought came into my head, which I now recognize as the Holy Spirit showing me something. He exposed my hypocrisy because I looked into the painting and I said, and the art, the art teacher repeated this in front of the class. I'm like, oh, no. I dare not go into the light for fear of exposing myself. I didn't think I had a problem, but the Holy Spirit just showed me something. And so Matthew 5, 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The Lord wants us to shine our light, and that light is Christ in us. Because the light of Christ that came into the world, as was prophesied in Isaiah, that they had seen a great light, and Christ now in us, the hope of glory is that light that through his bride will shine as the noonday. 
that there is no room for compromise. There is no room because the fakeness, that which looks good but is hiding your evil intentions and the evil desires of your selfish heart will be exposed. You must prepare. You must prepare. For Jesus said in verse 17, Matthew 5, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle will by no means pass away from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments, don't think that some sin is okay, because it's not, and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. And what was their righteousness? It was fake. Luke eleven thirty nine. Then the Lord said to him, now you Pharisees make the outside of the cup and dish clean, but your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. Foolish ones, did he not did not he who made the outside make the inside also, but rather give alms of such things as you have, then indeed all things are clean to you. In the meantime, when an innumerable mul multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, that's a lot of people, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. We must prepare. 1 Corinthians 3.16, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which you are. This is the word of God. Do not defile your temple. I speak over everyone in this room who hears the sound of my voice. Discernment increase. Discernment increase. For there is more, there is more, and there is more that the Lord wants to bring you into, but what you're holding on to will not allow you to move forward. He wants you to move forward, but what you're holding on to is not worth it. You know this, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Do not allow your life to be marked with hypocrisy. And don't think that somehow you're above it. A life of repentance and prayer is the only antidote to this. For he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess your sins to him. So what must we do? Jesus, in Matthew 17, now this is, this is after Jesus sends out the disciples to minister and to heal the sick, cast out demons, cleanse the leper, all of that. So they're seeing miracles. All this is happening. But they couldn't cast the demon, for some reason, out of this little boy, this deaf and dumb spirit. They're having a hard time. So Jesus comes and says, O oh, faithless 
and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. For assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Unbelief. Unbelief. We have to get rid of unbelief. Now, this is what Jesus said the disciples had. Now, they're spending time with Jesus, and they're, you know, seeing some success. They went out and they saw some success. But at this point, they didn't for some reason. And it's because of unbelief. The miracles here are about to increase. Be prepared. Because he says in verse 21, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now, he doesn't say that to change his mind and say, oh, just kidding, it wasn't unbelief. It's because we need to, we need to pray and fast more. No, what he means is that your unbelief is in the way because you're not fasting and praying. Fasting and praying. This was a very clear mandate that I've heard, not just from Apostle, but the Lord showed this to me as well. So as we go about this, and I hope you join us, I'm looking forward to it, not to the lack of food necessarily. I'm looking forward to the presence of God increasing and hearing his voice clearly, and for him to clean this temple unlike ever before. So here's some instructions. Isaiah 58. And you may know this scripture, but let me highlight a few things for you as the Holy Spirit has highlighted them to me. Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Now my commentary. Your work of the flesh does not convince God to move on your behalf. Just to be clear. Okay, you could starve yourself for three months if you think it's going to make God will do something, but faith is what pleases God, not, not what you do in the flesh. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. This is why we fast, because we need the Spirit of God to move in and through us, and we need to get our flesh desire out of the way because it is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? That you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him and not your, hide yourself from your own flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness. Your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. The glory of the Lord is in this place. We must prepare. For what has been hidden will be exposed. And what you thought was a secret is about not to be. We must fast and pray. We must seek his face. Only the Lord can change you. Do not think you can change yourself.
be transformed by the renewing of your mind, which is a work of the Holy Spirit.